Welcome to our webinar, New Guide Dog Training Options and Summer Experience Camp. My name is Jim Dugan. I'm the Manager of Outreach and Community Engagement here at Leader Dogs. And this is our second of many webinars that will allow you to learn more about the programs and services that we offer here to empower people who are blind or visually impaired with lifelong skills for independent travel. This webinar is being recorded and will be available on our website within about a week. For those joining us via phone, if you have questions after the webinar, please call 888-777-5332. That's 888-777-5332 and ask to speak to a client service representative. Our client service representatives are available Monday through Friday from 8.30 a.m. to 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For those joining us online, you may enter your questions at any time using the chat bubble at the bottom left corner of your screen. Our presentation today will take about 15 minutes, followed by about 15 minutes of questions and answers. If we do have a lot of questions, we can go beyond the 30 minute allotted time. What I'd like to do is introduce to you today's presenters. First, I'd like to introduce Erica Erke. Erica is a Certified Orientation Mobility Specialist and our Manager of Extended Services. She oversees our Orientation Mobility Training, our Summer Camp Program, and our GPS Services. Erica is currently a member of the ACVREP O&M Subject Matter Expert Committee and a past president of the Michigan AER. She has presented several international conferences on the topics of guide dog readiness, alternative models of orientation mobility, and accessible GPS. Also presenting today will be David Lachlan. David has been a guide dog mobility instructor for 17 years and is currently our director of programs overseeing the training department and the outreach services and community engagement departments. He began his career working with guide dogs for the UK before moving to the United States in 2014 and working for leader dogs. David ensures that all of our programs meet International Guide Dog Federation standards. What I'd like to do now is turn the program over to David. Hey, David. Thank you, Jim. So today I'm going to give you an overview of our guide dog programs. Uh, but before I do that, I'm going to give an overview of, of our admission standards. Um, so these are the standards that we require for anybody who wants to enter into our guide dog program. So firstly, you must be legally blind, 16 years of age or older, there is no upper age limit, able to care for a dog, so this means things such as grooming, relieving the dog, general health care, and of course exercise uh, working the dog in harness and also a need for safe and effective orientation and mobility skills. We're not looking for somebody to be perfect in these skills but to be able to problem solve uh, and get out of various situations with those skills. Moving on to our on-campus training program, our facility here in Rochester Hills in Michigan uh, would be where you would stay during the training and you'd be staying in our beautiful facility that we have here. All of our rooms are en suite, um, much like a hotel. They have Wi-Fi, a mini fridge, um, and once the dog is actually issued with you, the dog stays in the room with you the whole time during training. The dog becomes your responsibility. And even though we refer to this training as on campus, each day we actually travel to various training locations depending on what you, the dog, may need in terms of your development moving towards graduating and going home with the dog to continue your journey. Uh, we consider the on-campus training to have the shortest wait time. Um, it's probably the most comprehensive due to the, the number of weeks that you would be staying here, which I will go over shortly, uh, and because also you're spending most of your time with the GDMI. In class, typically we would have 15 to 20 other participants who would be in class with you, and that also provides support from your fellow trainees as well. The other wonderful thing about being on campus here is this is where our orientation and mobility team are based, 
and that en ensures that we are able to support clients who may need some additional orientation and mobility support. Typically, the class length is up to three weeks. The food is great, as is the residence, and like all of our programs, it's free of charge. Our in-home program, uh, the guide dog mobility instructor will actually bring the dog to you in your home. And from day one, the dog stays with you. We were able to work around your schedule, work, family commitments, um, but there's still, of course, a need to ensure time for consistent training. We're also able to focus specifically on what your standard routes may be or, or specific needs in your environment. Uh, the length is typically up to 10 days of one-on-one -on -one instruction, and again, this is free of charge. Our FLEX program is a combination of both on-campus and in-home. And this is one of the newer programs that we have here at LeaderDog. So we're able to give you a solid foundation of training on campus and then allow for fo a personal follow-up in your home environment with a qualified guide dog mobility instructor. That way, again, we're able to work with specific things that you may need in your home or family situation. The length of that training, the beauty of this is it, it is in individualized to what you specifically need and we would work on, with you as to what that would look like. Again, this is a program that's free of charge. Our urban training actually begins again on campus here in Rochester Hills for the first two weeks and then we travel down to Chicago in the third week of training. The benefits allow us to expose you and the dog to mass transit travel. There's lots of crowds and heavy traffic, so anybody that works in those or lives within those urban type settings, this is a real beneficial program for you. Uh, we stay actually in a hotel that's in Oak Park, which is just outside of downtown Chicago, and we start some routes in that local area. And then from day two in Chicago, we take the L, which is the train network, into downtown Chicago, allowing us to be exposed to many of the distractions and environmental pieces that we need to look at there. The length of that training is three weeks and is also free of charge. Warm weather training. Actually, our guide dog mobility instructors left for Naples, Florida today, and they will be commencing training down in Naples, Florida over the next two weeks. Uh, we, we undertake this training during the winter months of the year, particularly as it gets very cold here in Michigan. And first-time clients will get in-home follow-up if that's needed. So if you haven't actually had a, a, a leader dog before, then if you would benefit from or want support in your home area after the warm weather training in Florida, then we will come and do that with you. The training in Florida itself is 10 days, and again, also free of charge. And finally, I'm gonna talk through our deaf-blind program. So our guide dog mobility instructors are specifically trained in using American Sign Language, and so this program benefits clients you communicate via American Sign Language, either visually or tactily. It's typically a one-to-one -one or a two-to-one client to re, uh, instructor ratio. The dog may well be dual trained, and that's a conversation that we would have uh, with you if, if that was something that you may benefit from. An example of that would be we've trained our dogs to respond to the doorbell. So if you have a visitor who's come, rings the doorbell, the dog will actually come and locate you, indicate that the, there's somebody at the door, and then guide you to where the door is to meet the person. The length of training, we're able to individualize based on what your specific needs are. And again, our DeafBlind program is free of charge. And with that, uh, to conclude my portion of this webinar, uh, we will have some time, as Jim said, for questions at the end, and now I'm going to hand you over to Erica Erkey, who's going to give details on our summer experience camp. 
Well, our webinar today is of great timing because Summer Experience Camp deadline is March 31st. Our camp this year will take place um, June 22nd through 29th. And we um, offer, again, this program for free to students or um, clients who are 16 or 17 years of age um, living in the U.S. or Canada. Those students should be legally blind and in good physical and emotional health. Our programming throughout each day of camp begins at about 7.30 a.m. and wraps up around 10.30, 11 o'clock at night. So it's a very rigorous program. One uh, portion of our program is um, leadership skills. Those, we take an um, objective of leadership through personal accountability. We use the book called FISH by Stephen Lundeen, Harry Paul, and John Christensen to explore four components of leadership through personal accountability, which include choose your attitude, make their day, be present, and play. Our next objective of camp is uh, GPS skills. We are um, happy to collaborate with Humanware and have them as a camp partner. and. Um, are able to provide our campers with a Victor Reader Trek GPS. Our, our campers will learn how to use the GPS in a variety of environments, including travel on a college campus, travel around town, how to be a navigator for a driver, and many more experiences with the GPS. An additional objective of a camp is several activities that um, other campers in other camps would participate in. We just adapt them so that our, our campers can have as much fun. We do um, biking by use of a tandem bike as well as a conference bike, which is a seven-person bike that's built in the round. We zip line, we rock wall climb, and we play beep kickball just as a few of the opportunities as far as activities in camp. And an additional and last objective of a camp is to explore mobility options. We have an opportunity to travel at night, and we do this in a safe environment in which um, campers participate in a partnered activity in an environment that we've been in before, but they get to experience what their uh, vision condition is like at night in this environment. We also, being at Leader Dogs for the Blind, have an opportunity to experience uh, travel with a leader dog. One full day of camp is dedicated to uh, the day in a life of working with a leader dog. Our uh, campers are matched up with a guide dog and work one-on-one -on -one with a guide dog mobility instructor to start to learn about the care of the dog and what their requirement is in regards to safe and efficient travel with a guide dog. One of the biggest benefits of camp is friendships, lifelong friendships. Teens from around the U.S. and Canada come together to participate in summer experience camp. Sometimes these teens are the only person with a visual impairment in their community, and coming together to share experience with someone who is similar to you builds lifelong lasting friendships. So don't forget that camp this year, mark it on your calendar, is June 22nd through 29th, and the deadline for applications is March 31st. All 
right, <clears throat> that, that's going to move us into the question answering portion of our webinar. Again, for those of you joining us by telephone, please direct your questions to our client service department at 888-777-5332. We will not be able to answer those questions today, but they would answer those for you. For those of you today online, you can type questions into the chat bubble at the bottom left corner of your screen. All right, I've seen we've had a couple questions come in during the presentation. The first one is, they're asking, is there an option for home follow-up after an on-campus training? Uh, absolutely. So even though we have the FLEX program that would be part on campus, part in home, uh, if there was a need and a real benefit to complete the up to three weeks on campus training and then have follow up in the home because we have qualified guide dog mobility instructors who are field representatives that live in various states across the United States, we can absolutely provide in home follow up as and when needed. All right. Thanks, David. We have another one. Um, they're asking about the types of the breeds of dogs that we use. What dog breeds do we use here at Leader Dog? Sure. So the majority are Labradors. We have uh, male, female, yellow, black, occasionally chocolate Labradors. They would probably be the majority of the dogs that we use uh, at Leader Dog. Uh, golden Retrievers as well, as well as Labradors cross with a Golden Retriever. Um, and then we have a few German Shepherds, not as many, um, but again, we have clients who wish to use and benefit from using a German Shepherd. And we have another question. They want to know what they can get at Leader Dogs that they cannot get at another guide dog school. That's a great question. I think what we're able to do is provide a lot of flexibility in our training. So we're going to work with you on what your needs are. What, what do you need in terms of your training? How do we customize that to you? As well as being able to be flexible, we have our orientation and mobility uh, program. Uh, for each guide dog client as well, we uh, offer and, and give them a GPS device um, that many clients find of benefit in terms of navigation. Um, yeah. Good, good. Thanks. Um, another question is from somebody who lives on the West Coast. They'd like to know if they will get the same level of follow-up um, if they live at that length of distance from uh, Michigan. Absolutely. We, we're able to follow up um, across the United States. Um, we will work depending on what the need is. If it's something where we need to get to you quickly, then we'll, we will prioritize that um, high. If it's, if it's something where you're able to wait until we're in the area, we will do that. But as I say, we do have various field reps across the United States, and we do actually have a field rep out on the West Coast as well. Good. We've got a lot of questions coming in today. Um, do you ever train guide dogs for stability as well? We have. Um, it's, it's not a common request, but we can. We can modify the harness um, to add an additional handle um, that can be utilized for extra stability, as well as actually teaching the dog how to brace should you become uh, unstable and, and uh, feel like you're going to fall. So we can do that. Um, again, the more information we have before training allows us to prepare the dog, make sure we have the equipment set up, um, and then we would teach you how uh, to utilize the dog in that way. David, while we were talking about um, breeds a little while ago, another person wanted to know um, what is the consideration between the different breeds and how much input does the client have in this process? So we always want to know what, what our client's wishes are in terms of breed. Um, again, every dog is different, even regardless of breed. You will find there are breed traits. Um, typically, the Labrador 
Uh, we know very food oriented, has its positives and negatives of course, but what that allows us is to teach and train them to guide in the way that we want. Um, German Shepherds, for example, typically more highly strong, very high workload, walk very fast. So again, it's, it's very much a conversation between our instructors and the client as to find what the best possible match might be. Um, yeah. Good. In discussing matches, the next question is, how long does it take for a match? And is there a specific weight that a person must be in order to get a dog? Good question. So the, the, the main priority is that we ensure that we have the best possible match for you. Um, now, on average, I would say for on campus, um, we're around a three to six month uh, wait time, but that is an average. Sometimes it can be quicker, sometimes it can be a little bit longer. It just depends on what your specific requirements may be to a match. In terms of weight, no, really what we're looking for is uh, stamina, so the ability to work with the dog, um, and a level of strength to uh, handle the dog. But again, we're going to be looking for what the best possible match is and what your handling abilities are. So how much distraction may you be able to manage? And we have dogs that may require a little bit more control, and we also have dogs that require very little control. So again, a lot of that comes into the matching. All right, thanks. We have a question about summer camp. We have someone that, what is the difference about leader dog summer camp? Great question. The difference about leader dog summer camp is that we have an opportunity to explore leadership um, as it relates to personal accountability and leadership skills in general as well as exploring mobility options, being a cane or a guide dog, and what is the best fit or the considerations that I need to take into account. Additionally, working um, very intricately with a GPS so that a participant can learn to use that in a multitude of environments, especially if they're considering going off to a college campus. All right, next question is about the age of a client. Would we ever consider training a client younger than 16, David? We, we do, uh, and we have. Um, but again, what I would recommend is, is you speak to client services um, and find out a little bit more about the program and what would be required. We will look at it, um, but what we want to make sure is, um, is at the right time, thinking about what's coming up going through high school, is the high school on board with having a dog? Um, so yes, we, we will consider, um, but what we want to do is be sure that that is the, the best and the right time to actually introduce a dog into that person's life. Um, the, the next question is about the, the, deaf, the yeah. deafblind program. Um, is there a plan to train all deafblind dogs on alerts to doorbells and knocking? We're, we're moving that way. This has been a relatively new addition to the DeafBlind program, um, probably in the last four years. Um, and that's, that is the direction that we're starting to move in and what we're researching and looking at are what other things outside of the, the doorbell, what other things may our clients benefit from in terms of the dog alerting certain sounds. The next question is about the application. Um, what do I need to do to apply? So you can, um, online, the, our application is online, so you can by all means download, use the online application that's there, which will come right through to client services. You can speak to our client services department. Again, we'll give you those contact details at the end, who will be able to walk you through all of the application process. Right. I'll, I'll just to give you that number now, it's 888-777-5332, or our, our website is leaderdog.org. Our next question is, can I have a leader dog if I have a pet in the home? The, the short answer is yes. It depends on a few factors. It depends what the pet is, um, how many pets, 
Um, now, we have many clients who have uh, dogs, cats, birds, those types of things, as well as their leader dog in the home. So again, that's just a, a further conversation about how to introduce, let's say if it's two dogs, how do you introduce those appropriately? How does the pet dog get on with other dogs? That type of thing, it's generally friendly. Um, so again, there's, there's just further conversation to have, um, but there's certainly no reason why we wouldn't say yes if there's additional pets in the home. The next question is about summer camp again. How many people do you take into summer camp? Our maximum capacity for summer camp is 24 participants. We do um, have some participants that have participated in years back uh, that choose to participate in a capacity of being a junior counselor or senior counselor, which also, again, goes back to that leadership development um, opportunity that we provide to, to campers. Thanks, Erica. You know, understanding that the next question is understanding that legal blindness is a requirement. How does a person know when they're ready for a leader dog? That's a, it's a great question. Um, there's many parts to that. Uh, of course, there's the, the orientation, the mobility, the stamina, the physical side, and the orientation side um, of that question. Uh, and the same time, it's a very personal thing, and I think there's an emotional aspect to it. Um, I think there's, uh, it's a beautiful way to travel. It's a beautiful mobility um, tool to have. The, the dog, certainly with the clients I've worked with, um, brings things uh, to their lives that, that are just wonderful. So it, it's a personal journey. I think um, without trying it, it's difficult to know, but I think if you're thinking about it, if it's something you're interested in, again, if you contact us to find out more details, we can talk you through some more of the specifics about dog ownership, what it's like to live with a dog, um, what you, you need to do for the dog on a day-to-day -day basis, um, and what the actual guide work is about. Thanks. Our next question is, is questions about our commands that our dogs know, and they want to, want to know what other commands can a dog do besides the basic guiding commands? So we, we typically break the, the obedience commands and guide commands up. So the guiding commands typically are in harness when you're working on the sidewalk, let's say. So that would be forward to um, go very much in a forward direction, left, right. Um, so again, giving the dog direction where to go and the dog navigating the environment. Outside of the harness guide commands, we have the obedience commands, sit, down, heel, stay. Um, uh, if you want to call the dog to you, we would ask the dog to come to us. So they're the typical base, uh, basics of guide work. Of course, we also teach our dogs to target things in the environment, so we, we can ask the dog to find, so find the door, find the chair, those types of things. Outside of that, typically there isn't really a need for us to teach anything else. Um, I'm sure, and I know of, of people I've worked with who may teach the dog other things, um, little tricks, if you will, to shake a paw, that type of thing. Um, so I think the, the rule with that is as long as it's safe and it doesn't impact the dog's guide work, um, then I say go ahead. All right, thanks. We have another question coming in about our summer camp. Erica, do you only take 16 and 17 year olds for summer camp? We do. We take 16 and 17 year olds primarily because we are licensed by the state of Michigan. So that is what our license um, covers us for. 16 and 17 particularly because that is the age in which peers without a visual impairment are experiencing mobility options and independence through learning how to drive. So we want to equal uh, and level out the playing field by inviting 16 and 17 year olds to participate in summer experience camp and explore mobility options of their own. All right. Um, this is where we're going to have to stop for today. Just to add on to your summer camp experience, to remember that it's going to be held this year from June 22nd through the 29th. And if you know any teenagers looking for this fun experience, 
and will allow them to develop some great leadership skills and independence and make new friends and spend time with dogs and tell them about this great opportunity. Like all of our services, summer camp is completely free, including air travel to Michigan. So if you'd like to learn more about our programs and services, please visit our website at leaderdog.org or call us at 888-777-5332 or email us at clientservices at leaderdog.org. For those of you that have joined us online, you will be receiving a short three-question survey via email. We would really appreciate hearing from you so we can make our future webinars easy to access and as meaningful as possible. We will do these once a quarter, and we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you very much for joining us, and have a great day. Bye now.